Tonight at 5, Wisconsin Republican lawmakers are working on a new bill that would further abortion restrictions. We'll have a breakdown of that proposal. Plus, we'll take a closer look at a new project that aims to bring a pedestrian mall to downtown Madison. And as the NCAA tournament kicks off, we're seeing how News 3 Now anchor teams are doing in their <laughs> crack it battle. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Wisconsin Republicans eyeing new abortion restrictions, this time looking to ban state employees from performing, facilitating, or even encouraging abortions while on the clock. The bill circulating now would have big impacts on many state entities, including the University of Wisconsin. Braden Ross is here now to explain. Braden? That's right. Since the overturn of Roe v. Wade, gynecology students in Wisconsin have been making the trek to other states to learn to perform abortions. But under this new bill, that, along with any other activity by state employees that aids or encourages abortions, would be illegal. A new bill with one main goal. No taxpayer money spent to um, further abortion, perform abortion, refer for abortion. It would ban any state or local government employee from performing, arranging, or encouraging abortions while acting within their job duties. It would also ban the use of state-owned property for the same things. The bill's author, Senator Andre Jacques, says the legislation was inspired by UW programs that promote the procedure. I think in Wisconsin, we've seen a number of occasions where uh, local officials at either the, the state or the local level have been involved in procuring or providing abortion, uh, certainly most notably with the uh, UW Hospital Clinics Authority. But while Jacques says the bill is focused mainly on stopping the use of taxpayer money for abortions, it also raises the question, where is the line? Would a rally be considered something that would be encouraging abortion and therefore not be allowed on public land or public property or state-owned property? Um, you know, I, I guess that would be... Uh, a legal question that, you know, you know, the, you know this, this particular language has not been through a uh, committee process yet. There's no question that this bill is unconstitutional. Democratic Senator Calda Royce says she's made it a priority to tell her constituents about medication abortions. That's the kind of information, whether I'm making a post on Facebook or um, talking to a constituent who's called and asked, that is, uh, Senator Jacques wants to criminalize, and it's a truly un-American assault on our fundamental freedoms. Now, this bill is still in the very early stages, and even if it passed, Governor Evers likely would not sign it into law. Braden, thank you. Looks like we're in for a windy and cold St. Patrick's Day. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolti is on the weather patio. Gary? Well, the good news is it shouldn't be wet. Today we've had rain. Right now, just a little bit of drizzle in the backyard, but eventually that will change over to snow. Let's take a look at visible cloud track. You can see most of the Midwest socked underneath the clouds. A little bit of clearing in western Iowa. That'll actually be here uh, sometime during the day tomorrow. But right now, high-resolution radar bringing bands of uh, showers on through southern Wisconsin. There's some breaks between them. Like I say, just a little bit of drizzle here at the station. But six-hour future track radar shows that rain mixing with and eventually changing over to a brief period of snow, uh, mainly around midnight, give or take an hour or two either way. Uh, but at this point, it looks like accumulations will be minor. Current temperatures, 43 right now in Madison, 45 Janesville, a little colder to the north and east, 39 right now in Juneau and Dodge County. But across Dane County, everybody's in the 40s, uh, 42 in Deerfield, 44 Middleton, and 43 the current temperature in Cross Plains. Look for mostly cloudy skies, scattered showers continuing this evening with nearly steady temperatures in the lower 40s. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that does include a warm-up, We'll have to wait till next week to get it. Gary, thank you. New today, the granddaughter-in-law of a Lafayette County woman is now facing murder charges for the woman's death. Emergency crews were called to the home of 83-year-old Lynn Montgomery on Car Factory Road in Benton back on February 27th. Montgomery was found unresponsive and later pronounced dead at a hospital. 30-year-old Shannon Busson was the one who called 911, reporting the woman had fallen and was not breathing. But court records show an autopsy revealed troubling details that could be explained by just a fall. A doctor who was cited in court records determined bruising on Montgomery's body likely stemmed from multiple blunt force injuries. A day after Montgomery's death, family members found handwritten notes around the home that appeared to say, quote, help, Shannon is hurting me. 
Busson was later arrested and is now facing homicide charges. She's awaiting extradition to Lafayette County from Illinois. New at 5, a Dane County judge ruled today that the case of a Madison man who is facing more than a dozen sex and human trafficking charges will be moving forward. 36-year-old Zacharias Singletary faces a total of 24 charges, including child pornography, trafficking, uh, trafficking of a child, and sexual assault of a child, among other charges. Charges. Singletary allegedly offered drugs and alcohol to the victims in exchange for sex. He will be back in court early next month for an arraignment. New at 5, Dane County and Madison officials announced they will soon no longer be accepting applications for emergency rental assistance through CORE because of dwindling funds. The program was funded through COVID emergency funds that were distributed through the U.S. Department of Treasury. Officials say it's provided more than $75 million in emergency rental help to 19,000 renting households. The program will stop accepting applications applications on May 31st of this year. Renters and landlords will still be able to get legal help through the Eviction, Diversion and Defense Partnership. Applications that are still pending or submitted before May 31st will continue to be paid out as long as funds remain available. Well, it is a concept that's been floating around Madison for decades and could be closer to reality. Tahlia Mohadeen spoke with city leaders about plans for a pedestrian mall on State Street, and she joins us there live with the details. I'm told by as early as this summer, everything you see around me could be dramatically different. But first, city leaders need to work through a lot of logistics. Those pushing for a pedestrian and bicycle mall on the 400 to 600 blocks of State Street are taking note of the success the city has had in the past in the 60s and 70s to make changes to traffic flow on the tail end of the street. They say though a reimagined State Street comes with challenges, the possibilities are plenty. The potential gain is big. And what we're looking to is to attract and to draw more people to come. The residents of Madison, tourists, the office workers and the residents, we need to create things that people are interested in seeing and places that are alive and vibrant. The pedestrian mall is still in its very early stages as there are a lot of constraints for city planners to work through. They have to make sure the changes are accessible for people of all abilities and that the new vision considers emergency access, city maintenance work, and business deliveries. Now in about a half hour, the group behind the research needed to make this a reality is set to present its findings and potential next steps to city leaders. Reporting live on State Street, Tahlil Hadin, News 3 Now. Tahlil, thank you. And happening today, the Madison School District hosting a job fair for teachers. It goes along with their spring signing day. Contracts will be issued at the event. The district will interview candidates on the spot. It's happening right now and it runs until 7.30. It's at the Madison College Truex campus in the Cafe Annex and there will be a short program of performance, entertainment, as well as light refreshments. New today, the the Pentagon has released new video showing the moment a Russian jet clipped an American drone, sending it crashing into the Black Sea. It happened right outside of Ukraine. U.S. officials confirm a Russian ship has already recovered some of the wreckage from the crash, but they also say they have wiped the drone's software system to remove any sensitive data. Have capabilities and means at our disposal uh, to protect and safeguard information uh, of which we have taken, but I just I have to leave it there. So let me go. Officials also say the Russian ships are not staying at the wreckage site because it is within range of Ukrainian missiles. Russia had originally stated that its planes did not force the drone to crash. They've now changed their story to say they had restricted that airspace since the beginning of the war. After the shutdown of two major banks, U.S. officials are working to reassure Americans there's no reason to panic. Today, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen went before the Senate Finance Committee to answer questions about the health of the nation's financial institutions. She said the banking system remains stable. President Biden also insisting there's no systemic banking risk that could cause a repeat of the 2008 meltdown. All of this reignites debate over future rate hikes by the Federal Reserve. Clearly they were doing this to try to tamp down inflation, but did they consider the possibility that some institutions may not be ha able to handle such a rapid increase in rates? It's critical for us to do what we can to bring inflation down and for the Fed to do its part as well. 
Now, if the Fed does decide to hit the pause button on its rate strategy, inflation could worsen. But if the Fed presses on, some of the risks include damaging a wider economy and unemployment could spike. The Biden administration has threatened to ban TikTok if the app's Chinese owners do not sell their stake in the company. Nicole D'Antonio tells us the app is used by more than 100 million people in the U.S., raising concerns about the Chinese government accessing private user data. The Biden administration is turning up the pressure on TikTok. CBS News has learned the White House is now demanding the app's Chinese parrot company, ByteDance, sell its stake or face a possible ban here in the U.S. The bottom line is that when it comes to uh, potential threats to our national security, when it comes to uh, the safety of Americans, uh, when it comes to their privacy, we're going to speak out and we're going to be very clear about that. TikTok fired back with a statement saying, in part, if protecting national security is the objective, divestment doesn't solve the problem. A change in ownership would not impose any new restrictions on data flows or access. TikTok CEO spoke with the Wall Street Journal. This is a priority for him. He said that when he took over as TikTok CEO two years ago, his number one priority was to earn trust. Congress is also taking on the issue. A House committee is calling on TikTok CEO to testify next week about the platform's privacy and security practices, as well as its impact on children. The security concerns aren't limited to the U.S. The U.K. is now following the White House's lead, banning TikTok on government phones. A member of parliament calls the move good cyber hygiene. It is both prudent and proportionate to restrict the use of certain apps particularly when it comes to apps where a large amount of data can be stored and accessed. The Chinese embassy said the decision is based on politics more than facts and that it will ultimately harm the UK's own interest. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Washington. Last week, the Senate introduced a bipartisan bill giving the federal government the authority to tighten controls over companies that operate within hostile foreign countries. The Biden administration supports the Senate bill and is urging Congress to pass it. Quick programming note with our coverage of the NCAA tournament and how it will affect broadcasts here on WISC-TV. The noon show will air on Television Wisconsin and Channel3000.com tomorrow. Tonight, tomorrow, the 6 o'clock news will be at 5.30, so right after this newscast and the 10 o'clock news that'll follow the final game of the night on CBS no sooner than 11 p.m. We'll be right back. My name is Nicole and a serious car accident changed my life. Gruber Law Offices helped us to be able to just try to live our lives while they took care of everything. They were there for me every step of the way. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. It's Steinhoffel's Dream Vacation Giveaway. Get in and test rest a Beautyrest black mattress for your chance to win a trip to sunny Hawaii. And right now, save $300 on your Beautyrest black mattress, plus get $200 in Steinhoffel's cash. Beautyrest black mattresses start at just $44 per month when you use Steinhoffel's 72-month financing. So save big and rest easy on your new Beautyrest mattress from Steinhoffel's. Shop in-store or online today. Two candidates for Supreme Court, two very different beliefs. Judge Janet Protasiewicz, she believes women should have the freedom to make their own decisions on abortion. Extremist Dan Kelly, he supports the 1849 law that takes away women's rights and criminalizes abortion, even in cases of rape, incest, and health of the mother. So who represents you? An extremist or a common sense judge? Vote by April 4th. Get 1500 purchase allowance on a 2023 Cadillac XT5 and XT6. Visit your local Cadillac dealer today. Fjords has been crafting beautifully designed functional furniture since 1941. Every aspect of Fjords furniture has been carefully engineered to create a higher level of relaxation. Right now at the Century House, purchase any Fjords furniture and receive up to 20% off. All models, all sizes, all colors. Experience the unmatched relaxation you can only achieve in Fjords furniture. Relaxation made beautiful. Visit the Century House at 3420 University Avenue in Madison or online at centuryhouseinc.com.
One call, that's all, means to me, I don't have to worry about anything. It meant everything to me, knowing right from the beginning that uh, I was in good hands. And it was the best call I could have ever did. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. The picks are in. Now watch throughout the tournament to see how our news anchors fare in a bracket battle. Whose brackets are busted and who will have that one shining moment. See how your picks are measuring up against the News 3 Now anchors every day during our bracket battle. A high-stakes election for a seat on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. News 3 Now presents a debate between candidates Daniel Kelly and Janet Protosiewicz in a campaign 2023 special. Tuesday at 4 p.m. only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. During the pandemic, billions of federal dollars poured into the state to help support our recovery efforts. But now a proposal would change how that money gets spent once it lands in Wisconsin. Political reporter Will Keneally has more. So once that money comes into Wisconsin, it goes to the Evers administration, which can administer different grant programs to spread that money around. But Republicans in the legislature want that power back in their hands. Irregardless if you're a Republican or a Democrat, we have a checks and balance here. And I think that's really important. The idea here is to let the legislature weigh in on how that money is spent. And there's already a little bit of a mechanism for this in place. Right now, when the state wins money as part of lawsuits like a recent opioid settlement, the state's budget writing committee has to sign off on how it's spent. It just um, is a collaboration. I feel much better having it decided by colleagues on both sides of it. It is also important that we collaborate with the issues that face the state uh, predominantly not Republican issues or Democratic issues. Democrats argue it's an extra unnecessary step. In short, the federal government wanted that money to go to the Evers administration, so why must the Evers administration now defer to the legislature? Is I think all of us, whether we are Democrat or Republicans, should reach out to the governor, whether the, the governor is a Republican or a Democrat, and find a way to work with him. I don't have that opportunity with billions and billions of dollars that are hitting the grid here to represent the people of the 88th district and allocate for that. And if you look at the map of here, none of these monies went into my district. How come? How come? So the other component that we're looking at this too is how that might take power away from the governor to direct how those funds are spent. So that earlier law that we were referencing about the opioid settlement and getting the budget committee to sign off on it, that came from the lame duck session between the Walker and Evers administrations. It was part of a series of legislative bills that took power away from the incoming administration and gave it back to the legislature. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. The legislature will continue to debate that proposal over the next couple of months, and if approved, they plan to send it to voters as a ballot referendum sometime next year. Let's get a look at your first Warren forecast now. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Cadalti. Gary? Well, it was a damp afternoon across southern Wisconsin, but three things you need to know, that rain will change to snow for a short period of time later on tonight, somewhere around midnight, give or take an hour or two either direction, and then it'll be a dry but cold St. Patrick's Day with windy conditions. Could see some winds uh, up as high as 40 miles per hour and it'll also be windy and cold on Saturday with highs only in the mid 20s and some flurries but after that temperatures should start to rebound rain vision rainfall accumulation estimates about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more up into the Fox Valley and eastward toward Milwaukee as well as areas south of La Crosse the lighter greens probably less than a quarter of an inch but I think most of the amounts are about right around a quarter of an inch and as you take a look at high resolution radar now the uh, more persistent area of rain has shifted off to the east we're seeing more spotty showers a couple of heavier embedded showers in there uh, uh, moving into northern portions of Crawford County, uh, just to the north of uh, Prairie du Chien. But Doppler track shows farther out to the west, the precipitation is changing over to snow across Minnesota and Iowa. And as we look at six-hour future track radar, that changeover will probably reach Madison right around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And then areas to the west will probably see just a little bit of snow accumulation at that point. That might move eastward through Madison. But notice how quickly the snow is moving through so that by morning, it's pretty much all gone. Future track snowfall uh, estimates generally less than an inch across the southern, actually about the southern two-thirds of the state. But northern Wisconsin, especially up near Lake Superior, will get hit hard again with a half a foot to a foot of snow or more. Winter storm warnings in effect for far northern Wisconsin, over toward Hurley, and then uh, eastward into parts of upper Michigan and the Keweenaw Peninsula. But as we look at the, our St. Patrick's Day forecast, 
Well, 31 for high tomorrow, dry and cold, and also pretty windy as well. So our forecast for tomorrow calls for a high of 31 degrees. It'll be cloudy early, but we'll see some sunshine in the afternoon. Future track, the showers coming through this evening, but notice the changeover to snow as temperatures drop into the 30s around midnight. It'll be cold enough for a little snow to accumulate, and then after that, it's pretty much gone. Again, any snowfall amounts will be less than an inch. Uh, if there are any uh, amounts greater than an inch, it'll probably be in some of the higher terrain areas over parts of South Southwestern Wisconsin. As we take a look at our first warm 7 to 10 day forecast, temperatures mid 20s for highs on Saturday. It'll be windy as well with a chance of flurries, but just as quickly those temperatures rebound. Back to near 40 on Sunday, first day of spring Monday, up to 47, near 50 for Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday will be dry, Wednesday we'll see some showers, Thursday will be windy and mild with highs in the mid 50s, but then on Friday the high of 49 will be in the morning with falling temperatures. Rain showers for much of the day that might mix with a few flakes of snow before it ends Friday night and then Saturday will be dry, maybe a mix of rain and snow Saturday night changing to rain showers on Sunday, high temperatures still in the upper 40s. All right, Gary, thank you. Well, as the big dance begins, the News 3 Now anchor teams are making their picks. We'll have an update on our bracket challenge. How's your bracket looking? Especially after that Princeton, Arizona yeah. game. We'll have an update on that coming up next. News 3 Now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. It means we're committed to seeking justice for those injured by someone else's negligence. It means standing up to the insurance company, helping you with your medical bills, and getting you fully compensated for lost time at work. Have questions? When you contact Lawton Cates, there's no charge for our initial consultation, and there's never a fee until we deliver the results you deserve. At Lawton Cates, your life counts. Call today. If you're on Medicare and Medicaid, it pays to pick a plan with the benefits you want. With the iCare Medicare plan, members receive a spending account card that gives them $150 total per month to spend on food, OTC items, utilities, or even rent. Members also have a $0 copay for all covered Part D drugs and dental and vision coverage. Call to speak with a licensed sales agent who will help you find out if you're eligible. Rest easy. iCare is looking out for you and your health. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. For a tradition of performance, choose Pittsburgh Grand Distinction Interior Paint. It's a premium paint and primer for only $32.89 after 11% rebate. Revolution Super Premium Paint and Primer features game-changing stain resistance. It sustains a freshly painted look and washes away messes with ease. Pick up a gallon today for only $44.49 after 11% rebate now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Experience does count. When you're shopping for new furniture, a mattress set, or flooring, come to the experts at McGann Furniture and Flooring in Baraboo. Our experienced staff is well-trained in home decorating and will answer all your questions so you can buy with confidence. You'll find big city selection and an enjoyable shopping experience. And remember, we don't raise prices only to lower them later for a sale. Come see the difference experience can make at McGann Furniture and Flooring, downtown Baraboo. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, with the NCAA tournament underway, you can follow along to see how our brackets <laughs> here at News 3 Now turn out. Anchor teams from the morning show live at 4 and News 3 Now at 10. We're shooting for bragging rights, but Not we're in trouble. Brag no, we're in trouble today to see which team makes it to the final four. Now you'll see we all had some different approaches to the task in this bracket challenge. <laughs> We got a huge advantage here mm -hmm. because I know basketball, right? Oh, Susan, this is tough. There are okay. so many teams. Mark and Susan are going to pick it on like colors and mascots and guarantees. Slam dunks and mascots. Okay, sounds good. The morning crew, they don't really know anything about sports either. Those other anchor teams really think they have a shot of beating us. But Mark and Susan have the news hounds. That's true. If they go with dogs, they might have an advantage. Eric Franke? More like Eric Frank. keep your bracket to yourself, because it's embarrassing. But who are we going to pick? Because all I know is Wisconsin basketball. You're right. We clearly need some help. We need some help here. <laughs> this is too easy. Shane Hogan? 
All right, Josh, you got to take Alabama, West Virginia. I like Creighton. I'm a big Shaka Smart fan. Okay, so it's the Missouri Tigers, uh, Arizona. The Wildcats, Ollie versus the Bobcats. So where's the giddy? Which giddy do we like? Marquette, I don't know if they've got it this year. I'm with you. Mm. I think you're going to get a Marquette championship for the first time since Al McGuire won it back in 1977. I know. I got it, I got it. Purdue gets to the Elite Eight, but loses to Marquette. Yes. Right here, champions. This is all we need to know. We're going with Kansas. Kansas. Houston or Kansas? Houston. I wonder if they realize I get paid to watch sports. Yeah, there's no way Marquette wins that game. 77-68 Marquette mm -hmm. over UCLA for the national championship. There you go. Those two are still alive, but as yes. always in this first day, yep. there have been some crazy upsets. No, we're, we've all gotten slaughtered. Zach, Han uh, Zach Hanley, by the way, was the only one who picked Furman. Furman. Right. And they hit a three-pointer with two seconds left to beat right. Tony Bennett in Virginia. And Arizona, the two seed, yeah. just went down to 15 seed Princeton. That is only the 11th time ever wow. that a 15 has beaten a two seed. So I, that is, it's like it always is. I can't believe anybody in our brackets picked Princeton. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the no, morning show did. I, I think we're it. all... Unless they picked the tiger <laughs> over a wildcat. You were saying which kitty to pick. <laughs> Zach, as we mentioned, the only one with that Furman pick. And, uh, you know, Mizzou over Utah State. We had a lot of Mizzou grads around here, so they were cheering for that. A lot of us thought College of Charleston might get it done. Um, they had a great season, but they lost to San Diego State. So but the, the morning show did pick San Diego State. They were right. the only ones. Yeah, they're the only ones. And they don't know what they're doing, so that was pure <laughs> luck. All right, we're back. Final check of the first morning forecast. Gary knows how to predict things. He's next. Get the absolute best pricing now during Ashley's anniversary event. We've marked down everything to match online prices, all backed by our 30-day price guarantee. Get your choice of six months interest-free financing or low monthly payment options and free local delivery only at Ashley. Habish attorneys are the best of what a personal injury attorney is about. To get the most money for your case, you need to have a law firm that's unrelenting. We will fight with all that we have in person power, in knowledge, in experience to bring about the result they deserve. I can't give them their life back how it was, but I can give them the financial compensation to get their life back on track. The 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is here and ready to help. Anyone in Wisconsin can call, text, or chat to get connected to a trained 988 counselor. Trained counselors are here to support anyone experiencing a suicidal, mental health, or substance use crisis. You can also contact 988 if you're concerned about someone. 988 is confidential and free to all Wisconsin residents. 988 24 7. Call, text, chat. Here to support you. Remember this, and this, and the false selector scheme. In Wisconsin, extremist Dan Kelly was the right-wing lawyer behind the scenes of it all. The bipartisan January 6th commission revealed Kelly advised Trump operatives as special counsel to overturn the will of the people and overthrow the election results. Kelly even went on tour promoting the big lie. On April 4th, vote like democracy depends on it, because it does. Celebrate Ashley's anniversary with our lowest mattress prices of the season. Get your best night's sleep on Purple, Tempur-Pedic, Serta, and more. All backed by our 30-day price guarantee and special financing options that fit your budget at Wisconsin's number one mattress retailer, Ashley. Gary's back with the final check of the forecast. Pretty gray out there. Let's take a look at the live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Just kind of hazy and rainy. There's the WISC TV Sky Cam. Just light rain and drizzle here. Platteville Queeby Radio Sky Cam. Pretty much the same story. There have been some heavier showers northwest of Platteville, uh, but Platteville kind of on the southern edge of that next batch that's coming in. As we look at six hour future track radar, though, notice how that rain mixes with and changes over to snow for a brief period of time around midnight and a little bit thereafter, but by about four o'clock, should pretty much be done. So uh, this evening, look for temperatures to hold nearly steady in the lower 40s, off and on showers. Uh, temperatures, though, drop to 31 for high tomorrow. It'll be dry for the day, but it'll be a chilly St. Patrick's Day. Warm up for next week with highs in the 40s and 50s. All right, Gary, thank you. Now stay with us right here. News 3 now at 6. We'll move a half hour forward to 530. So Charlotte will join me shortly. Stand by.